So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. My, 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 the world has gone crazy once again. But then again, the world has always been kind of crazy when things are not in the right alignment. But I don't think I've ever seen the world this crazy. <laughs> First off, let me start off by saying this <clears throat> as a disclaimer. I don't give a fluke who I offend. This is my interpretation of things. It's not personal. It's spiritual. And this is my spiritual interpretation of events and how I see things based upon my own experiences. So some of the things I may say, it may not vibe with or align with the general public's view. And I don't give a fluke about the general public's view. Okay. So let me just say that first, because I think sometimes people, they look to people for their guidance and they look to people for, to put them on pedestals. Please don't put me on one because I'll disappoint you because I'm human like everybody else. And sometimes I feel one way and sometimes I feel another way. Okay. I'm a, I'm a water type of energy. I'm all over the place. So I don't, I don't always feel <clears throat> the same way all the time. And you have to excuse me. My allergies are really bothering me right now. So, but anyway, we're going to talk about a couple of things in this video that may not have anything to do with, with one another, but I think in some ways, everything ends up connecting in some way, you know? I want to talk about Doris Duke first. Now, Doris Duke was an heiress to the Duke Tobacco Fortune. Um, her father's name was James Buchanan Duke, and she was the heiress to his fortune. She was a, philanth a philanthropist, and she died in 1993 under some very mysterious circumstances. And I encourage people to look up the movie Too Rich, the Doris Duke story, the one with Lauren Bacall. It came out in 1999. I encourage people to look at that movie. Just go and look at it. It's on um, Tubi, and I think it's in other places too, but I know it's on Tubi. T-U-B-I, Tubi. I know it's on Tubi. Her story always fascinated me, Doris Duke's. Um, because she is a, she's a prime example of how your parents can either inadvertently or purposely curse you. And there was definitely a generational curse on Doris Duke. And this is another prime example that it doesn't matter how much money you have. She was a multi-billionaire. She owned, um, you know, she owned the tobacco. Um, she had her own tobacco company or whatever. She was the heir to that. She owned utility companies. She had the Duke Foundation. I mean, the woman had a lot of money, okay? She had a whole lot of money. She was an heiress. And throughout her life, I noticed something. She kept going to different places, and people do this all the time. She kept going to different places to find peace in the world. She went to Hawaii. She went to other places <clears throat> in Asia looking for peace. And that really says something about a lot of rich people like her. And then we're going to veer off into Puff Daddy and all of the out and all of the stuff that's going on with him now as of recent. But allegedly, Doris Duke had an affair with a well-known black swimmer named, uh, what's his name? I don't feel like looking up his name, but he was a well-known black uh, swimmer back in the day. I can't pronounce his last name, but he was from Hawaii, I believe, but he, he classified himself as black. Makes you wonder 
was there a large black population in Hawaii at one time before they were replaced by hybrids? Just, just, just a question. But she was constantly trying to find peace in the physical world. She was always going to physical places trying to find peace. And in the movie, because I believe she got pregnant by him, in the movie, this well-known black swimmer, he told her, he said, Doris, you must not look for what you're looking for, basically is what he told her. What you're looking for, you cannot find that in places or other people. You have to find that in yourself. And that is a hard concept for a lot of us, for a lot of people to swallow. So her mother was very cruel to her and very evil to her. Her mother told her out of maliciousness that Doris, no one will ever love you. You might as well never get married because no man will ever love you. The only thing he will look at you and see is your money. Her father told her something similar, but her father did it in a more loving way and out of concern. His version of it was, like I said, everybody has their own interpretation. <clears throat> His version of it was, Doris, people may pretend to like you because you have a lot of money and you're going to understand that as you get older. But ultimately what that did was the father did not recognize it. The mother probably did because her mother was really mean and nasty and hateful. What that did was, is that created a curse. There was already a generational curse on them, but it really, really manifested through Doris. When her mother told her, no man will ever love you. They will only look at you and see money. And then when you look at how her life ended up, that's exactly what ended up being manifested. Every man that she married, she was married to a well-known congressman. Um, she was married to um, Ruby Rosa, who was a, a from he was an, an Italian uh, playboy back in the day. You know, I mean, every man, I believe Barbara Hutton was married to him, too, wasn't she? If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I got She's another philanthropist and heiress from back at that time. Her and Doris Duke were friends. But that's another story. Um, every man that she married. And every person that she came in contact with, all they saw was her money. Even that scam artist, um, Shandy, um, that she adopted as her daughter, because Doris Duke, um, she didn't have any, um, she didn't have any children. And the child that she was pregnant with, she ended up losing that child. So her mother, and really it was the mother's curse that really cursed her the worst. So it doesn't matter how much money anyone has. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. It doesn't matter how many homes that you have. A curse is a curse is a curse. And a lot of times, sometimes, the curses that are put upon us are put upon us by the very people, it's not, sometimes it's not outside forces. It's the very people that are right there around you. Your mother, your father, your parents. I mean, well, I said your parents, but your aunts, your uncles, you know, your family in general. They are the ones who be throwing curses at you for the most part. And they instill in you hopelessness instead of instilling in you life and optimism, and hope. And that's exactly what her mother and father did to her. And that is why she was never able to really find love. Because she was walking, talking, eating, breathing, and pooping in her own curse. That she believed subconsciously, and she manifested. And we have to reverse and remove these curses that are put upon us. 
we're thinking a lot of times, oh, it's some jealous person over here, and it could be, or it's some jealous person over there. It could be. But have we ever really sat back and thought that the people that have the most access to us are the ones who put curses on us, like our mothers, our fathers, our siblings, our cousins? That's why I don't go to a lot of family functions. My family called me, when was it, last week? And I made it a purpose not to answer the phone about coming to some uh, uh, seafood boil or some seafood, some bullshit seafood. Number one, I, I don't, you know, I don't eat seafood that much. Now, I may put a couple of pieces of shrimp in my salad. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't eat a lot of crabs and crab legs and all that. I do like crab cakes, but I'm not a, uh, <clears throat> I don't eat a lot of seafood. Number one, it's full of cholesterol. You know, I'll eat seafood every now and then, and I don't have no cholesterol problems. And I don't want to get any, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, the point that I'm making is that I feed my family with a long handle spoon. And that is why I tell people all the time, I'm not thinking about the rest of you motherfuckers. I'm not thinking about y'all. Because the people who have thrown curses and spiritual attacks at me have been my family. And that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. We want to blame outside sources, but no, it's them motherfuckers right there that you're eating with. It's them. It's them. The ones that you're eating with, the ones that you're laughing and grinning up with, it's them. That close friend who you think is your friend, but they really hating on you the entire time. They're the ones cursing you. The ones that you're sleeping with, they're the ones cursing you. So Doris Duke is a symbol and a prime example of it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much of a of a philanthropist you could be or that you are. It doesn't matter how many homes you have. You are still subjugated and vulnerable. You can be vulnerable to the curses that are put upon you, especially by your parents and the people that are around you, a.k.a. your family. And what you look for in other people, you're not going to find that. That's why a lot of people don't like me. And I found that because they don't like me because I am self-sufficient. I am spiritually self-sufficient. And I don't depend on other people for my enjoyment. I don't depend on other people for my happiness. I like people, don't get me wrong but I feed them with a long handle spoon because I know how people are. The very thing that they claim that they love about you is the very thing that they're jealous of you of or jealous of you about. And the very thing that they claim that they love about you. And I've said this before is the very thing that they hate about you secretly. And that includes our parents. Our parents are human like everyone else. You know, they're human like everyone else. So I just wanted to talk about that first, that no one, no one is above having to deal with curses because you have silly people who think, oh, that person has money. So their life is perfect and they they're they're not. You know, they, they, they're not dealing with any curses. Uh, that's wrong. That's not true. That's not true. A lot of these families that come from money, a lot of them are cursed. Money has nothing to do with it. If you're cursed, you're cursed. It's just that their money is not cursed. Now, that's that's now I, I, we can talk about that. Maybe their money is not cursed, but they are. They are. Doris Duke was cursed. <clears throat> she was cursed. And then on, <clears throat> then on top of that, she created some bad juju for herself because 
from what I've understood, wasn't she involved in a um in a murder? Didn't she murder someone, unalive someone? Someone that she actually had an intimate relationship with? I mean, this is all alleged. I, I you know, this is from what I've read about her. <clears throat> so yeah, she she was the poorest rich girl. Barbara Hutton the same way. <clears throat> Barbara Hutton, I'm sorry, y'all. My allergies are bothering me real bad. Barbara Hutton is the same way. She was another heiress and a philanthropist who was cursed. I don't know the circumstances of her curse, of her curse, but I do know the circumstances of Doris Duke's curse. And her mother and her father, but her mother and her father both, they instilled in her that curse that she would never find love. And they didn't just stop at intimate relationships. They told her people in general. Let me tell you what her mother did in the movie. Doris was a little girl. She couldn't have been no more than what? Six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know. <clears throat> They used to get a lot of mail for her. People used to write to her. And her father who died, he used to protect her from that type of mail that was being mailed to her, right? <clears throat> I mean, she would get sacks of mail, like big sacks, like two big sacks of people writing letters to her. And one day Doris saw one of the servants in the house saying, no, she saw one of the servants who had this big sack. And she said, what's that? And the servant said, well, that's people that are writing to you. She said, oh, my God, I want to read it. You know, he said, Miss Doris, I, you know, she was a little girl then. Like I said, she was nine. <clears throat> and he said to her, I don't think you want to read this. She said, yes, I do. Yes, I, you know, our kids are. Her mother, her evil ass, she told him, she said, why don't we let Doris read it? Let her read it. Because, see, the mother knew. She read it, and as she began to read the letters, Doris, little Doris, there were grown men writing her letters, telling her that they wanted to do things to her that no grown man should say to a child. People were threatening her with unaliving her. She's a little girl now, and her mother allowed her to read those letters. And see that right there, her mother allowed her mother program. See, her mother knew exactly what she was doing. That is a right there. That her, I knew her mother was a witch. Her mother was a witch. She was an evil one. And her mother programmed her mind. Not saying all witches are evil. Let me say that as a disclaimer. But her mother was an evil one. Because her mother programmed her mind. Her mother knew exactly what she was doing. She programmed her mind to believe that she was unworthy of love. She programmed her mind to believe that. That is why she allowed her to read those letters because she knew that that was spell work. Her mother did spell work on her. And she kept reinforcing it. She kept reinforcing it. She kept reinforcing that spell work on Doris. Even as Doris became an adult, even, even as she grew into an adult, her mother kept telling her, no man will ever love you. And that's because her mother was an opportunist. She only married Doris's father because he was, he was James Duke Buchanan. I mean, James Buchanan Duke. He was the richest man in the world at that time or in America. But she kept reinforcing that into Doris's subconscious. You can't trust people. People will always hate you. Because the mail that Doris got as a child, it was all mainly hate mail. And that is what her young subconscious mind was programmed with. It's the same thing that my family did to me or tried to do to me. Because they some evil motherfuckers too. They tried to make me feel as though that I was worthless. They tried to make me feel as though I had no value, all under the guise 
of trying to so-called discipline me. But disciplining people is different from degrading people. My niece and nephews will never come up with a story saying that their uncle degraded them or made them feel less than. They will never come up with a story about that. And I'm not saying that I'm the best uncle in the world or nothing like that. But one thing for certain, they can't tell you that I've abused them, that I've done anything to them. I've always been good to my nieces and nephews. The ones that I do have contact with. My niece and my old two oldest, I'm really talking about my two oldest nieces and nephews, my two oldest niece and nephew, the two old ones, two older ones. I'm talking about them. Mainly. They can never say that I did it. They'll never have those type of stories about me. Because I come from a different, I come from a different mindset. See, my family has a curse on it too. And chances are yours does too. But see, I'm the curse breaker. I'm the change that they not ready for. See, my family operates in their own curse as well, in their own generational curse as well. But see, I am the generational curse breaker. But because they want to hold, people get comfortable in their curses. They get comfortable walking in those curses and it gets to the point where they think that it's right. They believe that it's right. It manifests and it, and it just makes them feel as though that their ways are right. And they pull other people into their orbit and their orbit of cursed ways of life. So I understand what I'm, you know, what I'm talking about. I understand. And I could see the curse that was put on Doris Duke. And if you dig deep enough, I believe a lot of people said that Doris Duke was cursed anyway. But it didn't matter about her money. That's the real point that I'm trying to make. It didn't matter that she was an heiress and a philanthropist. It didn't matter that she kept traveling to all of these different spiritual places in Asia and Hawaii. None of that mattered because she didn't, the, the, the place where it mattered, she didn't have it. And that was her heart. She didn't have peace in her heart. At 80 years old, she was still running around getting plastic surgery. Because she was so unhappy with self. She studied the Buddha, she chanted, she did all of that. But none of that mattered because it didn't penetrate and she did not understand the spiritual concept that it's not about doing all that. It's about internalizing that and having that peace in your heart. See, I don't have to go on vacations and run across the globe and all of that type of stuff. I don't have to do all that. I don't have to run away from anything because I have peace in my heart. Now, sometimes things in life may make you feel, you know, because we're all human. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like everything is Pollyanna all the time. No, because things happen. You know, we, we lose people through death. You know, there's change in life, which can be difficult. So there are things that are always happening. But one thing that I've always been able to maintain, and that is one of the most powerful things, is my peace. Sometimes it may get a little muddy. But that is something that people can never take away from you. And that is your peace. And I don't care. And, and no amount of money can buy that. You can go to Sri Lanka. You can go to Hawaii. You can go to Asia. You can go to the Willacoochee honky tonky. I don't know. Shit. I'm making some shit up. You can go wherever. But if you don't have peace in your heart, you don't have anything and no amount of money can buy that. And that is what that black man told her, that swimmer, I forgot his name, when she went to Hawaii because she had a house in Hawaii. And that swimmer told her, Doris, what you're looking for, you're not going to find in people or places. You have to find that in your heart. 
And to me, that's the most important thing. So when we look at somebody like P. Diddy, right? I'm not going to break down what we saw in that footage that came out yesterday on CNN of him attacking and brutalizing Cassie Ventura. I'm not going to talk about that, about the actual footage. But when you look at somebody like P. Diddy, it's the same exact thing. This man is a multi-billionaire. He has built empires in the music industry. He has created uh, uh, personalities. But all in all, P. Diddy does not have any peace in his heart. People have idolized this man for many, many, many years but he has no peace in his heart at all. He has no peace. He has a lot of money, but he has no peace. I saw the footage of him brutalizing that young woman in that hotel in 2016. the one that they released yesterday on CNN. I saw it. And I'm not surprised. He's a disgusting person. You know, I'm not surprised. My question is this. Why did they hold on to that footage at that hotel for so long? And why didn't anyone pick up the phone and call the police on him? I don't care who he is. Let me tell you all a story. When I had when I was homeless four years ago for. For a while, I was homeless for some months. I had to stay in a hotel. There were some people that were next door to me in the hotel. It was an older couple, an African couple that was next door to me. And the wife was, the wife was sick at that time. I think she had COVID. Now this was back when COVID was really, really bad. And I would hear him over there two and three in the morning talking really aggressively and really, really, and you know, I didn't, and until somebody told me what was going on, I, th- I forgot how I found out. He was talking to his wife. This woman was sick and he was being verbally abusive towards her. Two and three in the morning, right? The next day I went down to the front desk and I told them, I said, look, this man is verbally abusing. I never liked him anyway, that man, because I I never liked him anyway. But he was, I told him at the front desk, I said, that man is verbally abusing that woman and she is sick. Two in the morning, I should not hear your voice hollering and screaming. I thought he was on the phone until somebody said, no, that's him talking to his wife. I said, okay. I went to the front desk. See, I didn't know it until the next day that that was him talking to his wife like that. And I I immediately went to the front desk and I told them, I said, you all need to do something about that. Do a wellness check on that woman to make sure that she's okay. You know what I'm saying? I find it interesting. And again, this is my interpretation of things. I find it very interesting and very disgusting that you have some people, I, you know, I'm hearing, I haven't heard it myself. No, I haven't heard it, but I've heard other people talk about how there are some people talking about, well, 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 P. Diddy, you know, is another black man that they trying to bring down.
That really makes my blood boil when I hear stuff like that. What is P? And then people were talking about a lot of the people that's turning on P. Diddy are people that he gave opportunities to, that he said, gave money to and all that. Let's go back to what I said about Doris Duke. A curse is a curse is a curse. Just because he fed those people, just because he gave them opportunities, and just because he did X, Y, and Z for them does not mean that they should remain silent. It does not mean that they should remain silent about the dirty, horrible things that he has done to women, especially other black women. Just because somebody does nice things for you does not make them a good person. And you know what I find very interesting? The View won't even talk about P. Diddy. The View talks about everybody else. They talk about Donald Trump. They talked about that fiasco in Congress yesterday with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jasmine Crockett, which I don't even want to talk about. Because Congress as a whole, they have lost they, they freaking mind. Okay? As a whole. I guess in, maybe anybody can be a congressperson now, right? Anybody. Because where do these people come from? Where do these people come from? The View won't even mention the allegations against P. Diddy. Don't you find that very interesting? When they raided his home, the view didn't report on it. But they talk about Donald Trump, right? This footage that came out, let's see if they talk about this Monday. They won't, I bet you they won't. Why won't the view talk about the allegations against P. Diddy? Isn't that very interesting? And nobody has no questions about that? Unless P. Diddy is an affiliate or affiliated with The View or a contributor, or is he up under the Disney energy? Because I believe Disney is the company, is the parent company for ABC and The View is on ABC. So what's really going on? I, why, why is The View protecting P. Diddy? Why won't they talk about him? They talk about everybody else. And they are supposed to be a show that up, it's, a, it's a show with a bunch of women on the panel who are supposed to uplift the safety and sanctity of women. But yet you all are not talking about what this predator has done to women, mainly black women. But you're talking about Stormy Daniels and Trump. As far as I know, Trump ain't never beat up none of his motherfucking wives. As far as I know, and I'm not taking up for Trump, but since people want to compare and contrast, I don't think Trump has done some of the things that P. Diddy is being accused of. I'm not saying Trump is innocent. Don't make no motherfucking mistake about it. Make no motherfucking mistake about it. But they keep comparing Trump to P. Diddy. But they talk about Trump all the time, but they won't talk about and address the things and the allegations against P. Diddy. And at this point, they are not allegations at this point. I loved my uncle. My uncle was a big time drug dealer in D.C. back in the 90s and 80s. Love my uncle. But my uncle didn't always do the right motherfucking thing. I loved my uncle. He was my favorite uncle. But as I got older, I began to see, you know, I'm, well, he, he was murdered when I was very young. But now that I'm older, I begin to see that he, too, did not have any peace in his heart. He didn't have any peace in his heart. He, too, had a problem with putting his hands on women. My uncle. I'm putting my own business out there. Yeah, my uncle. And he was my favorite uncle.
He beat up my mother one time and he beat up one of my other aunts. This is my uncle. So when I saw that footage of P. Diddy dragging Cassie through that hotel and attacking her, when I saw that, I said, you know what? This reminds me of my motherfucking uncle. When he beat up, when my uncle beat up my aunt, I was there. I was a little boy. I was a little boy. My aunt was on drugs. She stole some jewelry from him and sold it to some Jamaicans or some shit. Now, this was back in 1986 or 1987. This was right before my grandmother passed away. I was raised by my great-grandmother, my grandmother's mother. My uncle and my grandmother, they came up to our apartment on Aspen Street. My aunt, she was in the room, sleep. He goes into the room. My aunt is asleep and he beats her while she was asleep. My great-grandmother and my grandmother, I was only seven or eight at the time. My great-grandmother, and I was just standing by the door looking because she was sleeping in my bedroom. My great-grandmother and my grandmother, they both were hollering and screaming at him to please get off of her. He finally got off of her. My grandmother died. Not long after that. So when I saw P. Diddy doing that to Cassie Ventura, it triggered me because it reminded me of what I saw my uncle do to my aunt. And let me just say for the record, that aunt that he did that to, I don't like that bitch. I don't like her. But she didn't deserve that. Now, I did not dislike her then when I was a child. I loved her back then, but I don't like her now because she got a bunch of problems. They knew that she was on crack. He sold crack. So what did he expect? This is the hypocrisy of men. And yes, I'm talking about my uncle. He sold crack. And then you're mad because my aunt who was on crack. You're mad because she's acting like most drug addicts acted. Stealing. Doing whatever they had to do to get high. But you sold it. You sold it. Make that make sense. So how you going to get mad at her? over that I'm just I'm just I'm just saying she did not deserve that she didn't deserve that she didn't deserve to get beat up like that I don't care what she stole from him she didn't deserve that I'm talking about my aunt so when I saw P. Diddy do that to Cassie Ventura in that footage, it reminded me of what I saw my uncle do to my aunt. And that traumatized me. That traumatized me. I was standing in the doorway watching my uncle, somebody that I admired, beat up his own sister. Then he beat up my mother one day too. And I wasn't there when that happened. I was a little bit older when that happened. I think I was 12 or 13. Had I been there when that had happened, Either he would have been unalive or I would have been unalive. And that's real talk. That's real talk. So when I hear people talk about. They just trying to bring another black man down. No, that black man brought himself down. He brought himself down. No one is bringing no, trying to bring no black man down. Ever since P. Diddy 
came on the music scene, have you all noticed all of the murder, the mayhem, the chaos, the, 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 the um, how could I put it? The uh, denigration of women in music, the, de the degradation or the degrading uh, of visuals of women in music. Just how the pop and R&B R &B scene went down the tubes after he came on the scene. This is the same man. This is the same man that went on to Wendy Williams' show years ago and referred to himself as Brother Love. That he was love. This is the same man they're dressed up as the Joker and was running around Los Angeles harassing people. He was harassing that man, that actor, talking about, I'm love, I'm love, I'm love, I'm love. This is the same man we're talking about. This is what people, now you talk about people trying to bring down the black man. Is this the black man's version of love? I'm, I'm not... I'm not I'm not um, putting all black men in this pot, by the way, but I'm just making a point. Because there are people talking about and making comments. They're just trying to bring down a black man. We all know that these people have handlers. We all know that there may be a hand behind the curtain. We all know that. But let me tell you one mother freaking thing. What he did to that woman, Cassie, what he did to her in that footage and that footage, if that footage is authentic and 100 percent true, what he did to her in that footage, that has nothing to do with the handler. That has nothing to do with the hand behind the curtain. That has to do with him and his insanity and his maliciousness and his choice to be an evil, disgusting person. That has nothing to do with the handler. Stop trying to blame all these phantom, you know, uh, uh, you know, people behind the scenes and phantom handlers and, you know, all of these people that we can't see. We all know that that happens. We get it. We get it. But what we saw on that footage had nothing to do with a handler. He did that of his own accord because Puff Daddy is an evil, sadistic bastard. And I've run across uh, many of them in my life. And most of them have been black men. And some women, but black men in particular. So don't play with me. I've had them in my family. I've gone to school with them. I've seen the things that they have done to people. And it has nothing to do with them being black. It's just that they some evil, sadistic motherfuckers. But we get into this place of we can't call black men out because of racism and racism and oppression. Well, how is he being oppressed? Show me where Puff Daddy is being oppressed. Where has he ever dealt with oppression? Where has he ever dealt with oppression? Remember, this is the same man that says he's love. This is the same man that says, I'm love, change and vibration. Change of vibration. When he was harassing that actor, when he was dressed up as the Joker from Dark Knight. Which I think he was under some form of possession or drugs. Number one, he's an alcoholic. He's taking in all in spirits. He doesn't know how to control them. And that's exactly what happened. So please tell me, how is this black man that people keep talking about is being oppressed? Show me how a multi-billionaire black man is being oppressed. Please show me. Show me where he's being oppressed at. Because from where I'm sitting, he's living pretty good. He's still a billionaire. He's still not in jail. And then he has corrupt attorneys 
that are helping him stay out of jail. So please show me and tell me where is the oppression? There may be oppression against your average black man and your average black woman, but there is no oppression and there is no bringing down no black man like P. Diddy. P. Diddy did this to himself because he chose, he chose to use his fame and fortune as a way to control, manipulate, and harm people. So all of those people who said he's fed people, he's given people opportunities, he's did this, this, that, that, this. First of all, he did all of those things for ulterior motives. He didn't do those things out of the kindness of his heart. That's not his makeup. He's a Scorpio. He's a Scorpio. Shadow self is Taurus. He did not do those things for those people out of the kindness of his heart. It's almost like, you know how you've seen some of those movies where people, because Puff Daddy is an illusionist. He's a magician. He's an illusionist. You sit at someone's table and they give you a spread of food. The food looks wonderful. I mean, they got ham, they got, you know, fruit, they got cheese, they got wine. And there was a scene in Hellraiser Bloodline, actually, where the illusionist and the occultist, Delil, he did that to that woman that they sacrificed, Angelique. Or to this young peasant girl who then became Angelique the demon. She was sitting at the table. And Delil was an illusionist and he was a magician, but he was also an occultist. And as she was eating her food, all of this good food, when she, when, when she realized that the illusion was over, all of the food turned to maggots and worms. The wine in her cup turned to worms and maggots. And that is how P. Diddy is. Anything he gives to anyone, it's going to turn to decay, maggots, and worms. So please let's stop with this. They trying to bring a black man down. Because that particular black man has tried to bring down so many other black men and so many other black women with him. So let's stop with this feeling sympathy for P. Diddy. I don't feel no sympathy for that motherfucker and I never will. And I've never liked him. See, I've never been bamboozled by him. And that's another reason why a lot of people don't like me because I don't get bamboozled very easily. I don't get bamboozled by these celebrities and all of these people. I, I don't. I can like the talent and not like the person. There are a lot of celebrities, I like their talent, but I don't care for some of their characteristics from the things I've heard. Like, I like Faye Dunaway's talent, who played Mommy Dearest. But Faye Dunaway is a very difficult person. She's a very difficult person, but I like her talent. I like her movies. Same thing with Anita Baker. A lot of people are mad at Anita Baker right now because she canceled a concert 15 minutes before it was getting ready to start back the day before Mother's Day. I've heard Anita Baker has a very, very, you know, she, she can be an interesting person. <laughs> I've heard she can be, you know, not very nice. I heard the same thing about Luther Vandross. But number one, I'm not trying to approach any of them. Well, I can't approach Mr. Vandross because he's with the ancestors now. But I wouldn't try to approach them anyway. I like her music and I would just leave it at that. But I've never found anything about P. Diddy that I liked. Never. He should have stayed in the background. 
He should have stayed in the back. He should have never made himself a public name and a public figure. See, this is this is a prime example of it's like the Lizzo effect, because remember, Lizzo, she was in the background from what I understand, making music for other people and stuff like that. Then she came to the forefront. And that's when a lot of her problems began. It's the same thing with P. Diddy. He should have stayed in the back. But he was so jealous and so greedy for that fame and for that attention that people like Biggie and Tupac was was getting that he had to push them out the way so he could get all the attention. He is a horrible person. And this has nothing to do with taking down no black man. It has nothing to do with that. This man is a morally corrupt person. He's a spiritually corrupt person. He's a physically corrupt person with his ugly looking self. He is a horrible person. So no, this is not about taking down a black man. This is about taking down an evil ass man who should not be a billionaire. He doesn't deserve it. And I ask the ancestors and the spirits to snatch it all away from him. Snatch it away from him. That's my request. I ask the most high, the high spirit to snatch it all away from him and to just take it all away. And he got the nerve to have a Bible up in his house when they raided it. Yeah, I bet he do. Pulling all them demons and calling on all them demons in that Bible. And all those negative spirits in that Bible. Son of a bitch. I heard, let me tell you what I heard. I heard he running around trying to get plastic surgery. And I also heard that he put a lot of stuff, I guess, assets in his mother's name. Hmm. If that was my son, I wouldn't want nothing to do with him. I'm going to be 100. I wouldn't want nothing to do with him. There would, there would not be an amount of money. It's the same thing with Miss Robbie from Sweetie Pies. Yeah, I know Tim is your son, but he murdered your grandson. He had something to do with your grandson getting murdered. How could you stand by him knowing that he had your grandson murdered in some insurance scam? And I'm not saying that mothers shouldn't stand by their children. I'm, I'm not saying that. I don't want to give that interpretation. But if my child did something like that, had my grandchild murdered? And, and I already lost a son? The father of that said grandchild? And then you, in an insurance scam, you go and have, oh, child, I, 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 no, no. I am so sick and tired of people putting race into this. This has nothing to do with P. Diddy don't give a damn about the average black person. What has he ever done for the black community? Hell, Bill Cosby did more for the black community than he did. And I don't even like Bill Cosby. But what has he ever done for the black community? What has he ever done for the black community? Please tell me, what has P. Diddy done that is so great for the black community. He hasn't even contributed anything of any substance to the music industry. He's been nothing but a bad omen for a long time. And I don't care about, I, I, again, let me say this. I know he got handlers. I know that. I know he has handlers. Hell, his handler may be Marjorie Taylor Greene. Who knows? Shit. Maybe her. Just like with Wendy Williams, we all know that that woman, uh, that's her guardian. We all know that that's really her handler. We know that that's her handler. That woman looks like a handler. That's how she's able to control Wendy's estate. That's her handler. Didn't you know? I forgot the woman's name. 
But that's her handler. And you mean to tell me, speaking of Wendy Williams, you mean to tell me that a woman who was such a public figure, always in social media, always doing, you know, uh, videos of herself, even at her worst, you mean to tell me that her family doesn't know where she's at and there is no footage of her? There's no footage of Wendy Williams anywhere. She's not even calling into any shows saying, I'm okay, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. She just disappears. And we don't have any questions. We don't have any questions about that. And I know a lot of people don't like Wendy Williams. They said, oh, she exposed, no. Let, let, let's put the, the, the bad stuff aside for a minute. The real reason a lot of people didn't like Wendy Williams is because Wendy Williams was exposing shit like this about P. Diddy 20 some fucking years ago, but nobody would listen to her. See, when a cancer tells you something, you need to listen. Wendy Williams is a cancer. When a cancer talks, you need to listen especially a cancer woman. See, all of the shit that's going on now, Wendy Williams was telling people this shit many, many years ago. She was telling people this shit many years ago. Love her, hate her, whatever. Now, the only issue that I have with Wendy Williams is that her imaging team had my old account shut down. They had my old account shut down and they contacted me. I still got the email. I still have the email. Let me speak proper English. I still have the email. Because I knew her life was unfolding the way that it would unfold. I predicted that. Not with the crystal ball, but with my discernment and my intuition. Men have intuition too. So they didn't like what I was saying, so they shut my old channel down. My old Shaman Rising account. But Wendy William disappears and nobody has no questions about that. This was a woman that was the media. She was a, a media person. She was the media all in, in and of herself. She was an institution all in, in, all in, in and of herself. She was an institution and she disappears. And the only way that we communicate with her is through this white woman who's supposed to be her handler and no disrespect to, you know, nobody white, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm dramatic. It's the same thing with Pete Davidson. Where is Pete Davidson? You don't even hear from him anymore since he broke up with the car, since he broke up with that Kardashian, Kim. And you know why Kim was booed at the Met Gala? She was booed because she did a horrible job in American Horror Story. Why would Ryan Murphy and them put her on some motherfucking American Horror Story? The bitch can't act. They would have been better off bringing back Lady Gaga and putting her in the Siobhan role. Or, you know what? Here's another one. Beehive fans, I'll give y'all this much. Beyonce would have been perfect for that role. Because at least we know Beyonce do have some acting abilities. Just like with Lady Gaga. But Kim Kardashian? But we're not supposed to have questions about these types of things. Right? We're not supposed to question anything. Where is Wendy Williams? Where is Wendy Williams? Where is she? I have a better question. Is Wendy Williams even still alive? They just sold her penthouse in New York. They just sold it. So who gets that money? Who gets it? I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just... I'm just, you know, trying to figure out what's going on.
What's really going on in this world? We got footage of P. Diddy from back in 2016 beating and dragging Cassie Ventura up and down a hotel hallway. Nobody says anything or does anything about it. We have major celebrities that are disappearing. Pete Davidson, where is he? Wendy Williams, where is she? But we're supposed to just keep sitting back saying, oh, everything's okay. It's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. It's okay that Marjorie Taylor Greene attacked that black uh, female congressman, Jasmine Crockett. It's okay that she's obnoxious and evil and nasty to people. It's okay that she's representing the American people. It's okay that Congress in that oversight committee or whatever they call it is committing unjust acts by allowing Marjorie Taylor Greene to still stay in Congress, a woman that is unfit to be a Congresswoman. She's racist, she's nasty, and she's disgusting. That's exactly what she is. And I concur with everything that Jasmine Crockett said about her. Bad built. Bad built, bad body, bad built, big manly looking hands. Marjorie Green Taylor. How dare you? And please, and, and you know what, let me say this. She is not a blonde bimbo. Blonde, what's considered a blonde bimbo were, were blonde white women who had sex appeal and who were attractive, like Marilyn Monroe, like Jane Mansfield, look them up, like Mamie Van Doren, like Diana Doors, Sharon Stone, Sybil Danning when she was younger. Marjorie Taylor Greene is not a bomb Blomshell or bimbo. She's not. She does not exude, or I'm sorry, exude those type of qualities. And I, and I guarantee you, even white men will tell you that. She's very unforgettable in so many ways. She is a horror story. And this is who they have as our representation in Congress. She needs to be thrown out of Congress. She's unfit. She's unfit. To me, she's no different than P. Diddy. Marjorie Taylor Greene is no different than P. Diddy. She's a predator and she's a disgusting person. And I don't give a fuck who that offends. Do something about it. That's right, you can't. Y'all think it's what, feast day for y'all to keep attacking black women and nobody is supposed to say anything? Because if white men can defend white women, then black men, whether we're gay or straight, we can defend and uphold black women. We can defend black women against stuff like this. Because white men, they always step in and defend white women against black women. And I'm stepping in energetically to defend Jasmine Crockett and any other black woman that has been subjected to this type of racism and predatory behavior by that type of racism. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's a racist. She is a racist. And she said, no, I'm not apologizing. Bitch, don't nobody need your apology. Your apology don't mean anything. You don't mean anything. 
She looks like the Joker from Dark Knight. She is a Joker. Bad face, big manly hands, <laughs> bad body. Jasmine Crockett had it all right. And you look at the beautiful Jasmine Crockett, beautiful features, beautiful face. And then she wanted to attack her on, on her eyelashes. Because you couldn't attack her on anything else. You couldn't attack her or anything else. But I can look you up and down and attack you on a lot of shit. Not because you're a white woman, but because you're a racist. And you're a disgusting person. And white America, I want you to know something. She makes you, just like we got black people and like P. Diddy that, that can kind of make black people look bad. Marjorie Taylor Greene. She makes you all look bad. She makes you all look bad. I wouldn't be surprised, allegedly, allegedly, if it doesn't come out that she was at some P. Diddy party. Because we all know that you're a satanic person. And I don't mean satanic in the context of the real satanic energy. No, I mean the satanic energy that you all follow from the Bible, which is fake satanic energy and a fictitious character, or should I say caricature? I can see her sacrificing babies and stuff like, I can see her doing that. Oh, that's right. She worships the God of the Bible. That's the real evil right there. Hmm. Anyway, I just had to get this off my chest. Y'all know how I do. Y'all know me. I just had to really, really get a lot of stuff off my chest about what's going on in the world and just all of this insanity. Just craziness. And like I said, this ain't personal. This ain't personal because everybody has the capacity to be a fucked up individual. It don't matter if you're white. It don't matter if you're black. It don't matter if you're Latin, Mexican. It don't matter. Everyone has the propensity and the capacity to be a fucked up individual. Anyway, that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. And once again, let me clarify, when I say that Marjorie Taylor Greene is satanic, I'm not talking about the real satanic energy. I'm talking about the one that that energy that they believe is Satan in that Bible, which in actuality, in actuality, it's really the God of the Bible. That's the real evil. one. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe I should say she sacrifices in the name of that God of the Bible. Maybe that's what I should rephrase it as and not as satanic. Because we all know that that God of the Bible does believe in does believe in child sacrifice. We know that. We know that. So let me rephrase it that way. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, keep just keep keep yourself above all this stuff. Just keep yourself above all this stuff. Watch. Listen. Pay attention. Just just watch. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you.